to do lab 34, we'll want to set up a netcat listener, get that running, create a cross-site script to push the data over to it, and then we'll execute the cross-site script to see how all this works. So we'll open up a terminal, localhost, and we'll set up our netcat listener to listen on port 1234. The number doesn't matter as long as we're careful to copy that into the actual script itself. N is for don't translate DNS, V for verbose, L for listen, P for port, one, two, three, four. To do the cross-site script, we're gonna use the echo.php page as our demo. If we click on hints and videos and then the cross-site scripting hint, that'll open up the tab for cross-site scripting. And on this page, we have a script down here that's already pretty close to what we want, not quite, but we'll take it over to our text editor here and we'll be able to make the modifications we need. We basically want to strip out this URL because we, of course, want our data to be sent over to that netcat listener, which was listening on localhost 127.001. But the rest of it's pretty good. We do need to put in that port number. If you have a URL, it's going to go to port 80 or 443 depending on whether it's HTTP or HTTPS by default. And we set up our listener on 1234, so we just need to make that modification as well. Back over on the echo.php page, we'll put the script in, and then we'll go ahead and execute it. And we'll go back over to the netcat listener, and we see that on the netcat listener, the request was received and the cookie is packaged up inside. So the data exfiltration via cross-site scripting worked. We go back over to the page where we had the lab. And if we look at the question, it's saying, what adjustments are gonna be needed if the IP address of the attacking machine changes? Well, we use localhost for our demo as the so-called attacking machine. And if we were to change that to some other IP, then we're gonna to have to make that adjustment in the cross-site script and issue the cross-site script again. So we'll pick this answer here. The attacker must copy the new IP into the cross-site script before sending to the victim. We'll submit that and find that that is the correct answer. 